all right and we are back and today we're back with a video this is something a little bit different uh as always uh this is a video by an amazing creator called casual Ge geographic now i've only seen his videos on like instagram and uh you know youtube shorts so this is going to be the first time i'm checking out a full uh reaction or full video of his uh, I'm doing the full reaction, guys. Let's not get this confused. Uh, so, yeah, Casual Geographic is called the Insane Plot Armor of Cats. Now, guys, cats are, I don't want to say evil, but they 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 got to be at least somewhere in the middle between good and bad. Like, cats are definitely a neutral, uh, chaotic neutral, if you will. Um, so I want to see this. They definitely have Insane Plot Armor. Uh, the whole like cats always landing on their feet thing and all that stuff. It, it's crazy. Uh, so guys, if you have, you know, go ahead, check out the link in the description. Uh, like his videos, go ahead and comment on them. Subscribe to his channel. Tell him that I sent you, you know, tell him that, hey, yo, this great YouTuber that I did a reaction to you. He told me to go subscribe to you and I did. And also while I was doing that, I subscribed to his channel uh, because guys, remember, you have to like comment and subscribe to this channel as well because if you don't youtube will come through that door and they will the insane plot armor of cats oh my god what in the mama come get it Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, grab the girl hand. Oh Lord, come on. Oh. <laughs> okay, I've seen that video on Instagram. That is hilarious. I don't see how this cat took on two dogs and then another this cat chokes like literally did like a freaking clothesline to another dog. That that's some next level stuff. Broken. A term used to describe a character so overpowered that they make the game stop functioning as intended and exploit the game's balance in their favor. True. Well, if cats aren't the most broken animals on the planet, God must have discontinued first place. I talk a lot about animals that got shafted by evolution. In fact, my most popular video today was about 10 of them. Well, if I ever do a video on nature's favorites, cats would surely be at the very top. Cats are arguably the most successful predators we've ever seen. With so many overpowered Damn. abilities, you'd swear it was plot armor. I don't even want to make this intro too long, so here's- Bruh did the whole s did the slap. It was like literally right in his face. Apparently, cats have faster reaction times than snakes do. That is insane. 10 superpowers your cat has that you may or may not have known. And number one, zero fall damage. You've probably heard that cats always land on their feet, but the real flex is being able to fall from heights that would have any human furnishing a coffin. A 1987 study showed that out of 132 cats that were brought to an emergency vet in New York City after falling out of a high rise, 90% lived and less than 40% required life-saving treatment. It gets even wilder when you realize that cats actually have a better chance of getting airdropped from a building and walking it off the higher the drop was. Whoa, what the f Yo, okay, I a human would have 100% been dead from that. A dog would have been done for from that. A rabbit would have been over with with that. A snake would have been donezo with that. Uh, guys, think of another animal and say another phrase in the comments for this. Uh, it's up to you guys. This is a call and response time. And it's all because cats understand physics. You see, when you're in free fall, you accelerate towards the ground until you reach terminal velocity, where you literally can't fall any faster. When cats reach TV, they splay their legs and kind of just parachute the rest of the way down. And instead of landing on their feet, they break their fall with their chest and abdomen. Obviously, they don't completely tank the hit, but thanks to their relatively large surface area to weight ratio, they maximize the points of contact that smack the ground and therefore minimize the damage. And since cats apparently have lifelong beef with gravity, cats that reach terminal velocity instinctively know not to tense up, but instead relax and basically turn themselves into a kite on the way down. The thing is, if they don't have time to reach terminal velocity, they end up getting hurt way worse. So like in a weird twist, cats that fall from two to seven stories actually end up more down bad than the ones that touch earth from 10 stories up. In fact, cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and living. Meanwhile, the average human has a 95% chance of getting outlined with chalk. Oh, and don't think the cutoff's 10 stories either. One cat named Sabrina took a 32-story express trip to the ground and walked away with only a punctured lung and a chipped tooth. Not to mention she was released and sent home two days later. Being impervious to fall damage is how snow leopards can not only make a living in the Himalayas, wow. but can legit fall clear off a cliff and the only injury they take is to their pride. Speaking of- All right, so cats are OP, guys. Uh, felines are ridiculous in the wild. Like, 
not even in the wild. This is just cats in general. Your normal house cat is don't don't throw don't don't do anything weird to your cat, people. But it can survive. It is a survivor. In a plot armor, did you know cats are actually built to predict the weather? You see, cat hair attracts static electricity, so they can pick up on the buildup of electrical charge that often comes before a really bad storm. And the cat's inner ears are sensitive to sudden drops in atmospheric pressure, which announce the arrival of a cloud assault. Technically, so can we. It's why our ears do the most and pop on a plane, but it's just that cat ears are that much more sensitive. And they can even smell rain and lightning coming. It's so OP that sailors used to use cats aboard ships as a four-legged forecast. For forecast. No, yo, yeah, forecast. Appar yeah, that was a good. That was a good pun. I will say, I can also smell rain, and ask any old person their knee or something starts to let them know about uh, the the thunder and the the changes in the rain. So I may also just be OP, guys. Um, who knew? I mean, I'm sure some of you guys knew, but, you know, to the vast majority of people out there, you're just finding out. Yes, the YouTuber you're watching right now can smell when it's about the rain. I don't think it's about the rain right now. Apparently, a cat with the zoomies means you could expect strong winds. A cat that sneezed was warning you of heavy rain. And apparently, if one licked their fur against a grain mid-sail, then you better make like God's golfing, because it's finna hail. Now, to be fair, a month surrounded by nothing but sea and sea men gives you a lot of time to just make stuff up. I mean, just how many sea monster stories was just a whale freeing his willy? But there might be some truth to the cat thing. Cats will often spend extra time licking themselves before a bad storm since having damn fur helps with the static thing I told you about. So basically, if cats could talk, we'd see a lot of meteorologists on unemployment. And speaking of no job, cats really managed to finesse their way into living in nearly 50 million homes in America rent-free. And one of the biggest reasons is because cats are the best manipulators nature has to offer. And if you think they aren't, you're probably a mark and you don't even know it. According to researchers at the University of Sussex, many cats will exploit their owners with a soliciting purr. It's more high frequency, triggers a sense of urgency in humans, and even someone resembles the cry of an infant, and we just have to assume that's intentional. And in experiments, not only did humans have a faster response time when hearing that purr compared to a normal one, it even affected people that never owned cats. This distress purr likely triggers a deep, innate nurturing response in humans, meaning you're literally hardwired to answer to it no matter what you were doing before. So apparently cats understand psychology too. That's not even really a joke because adult cats almost never meow to each other, but kittens do it with their mothers for food and warmth, and we have to assume they just figured out it works on humans too. And it's not just pet cats with this talent. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to lull them into a false sense of security. Tigers have reportedly mimicked sandbar deer and black bears. Bro, just, just listen to this. Are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows? Wow, that's that's interesting, because that would make me think this this tiger is plotting so hard on those cows. Like this tiger spends ninety percent of his day thinking, "How can I just get closer to these cows? I want to murder them so bad." Okay, I can do a cow sound, but it's the problem with this fence. I have a feeling this tiger is going to get one of those cows one day. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know what the situation is going to be, but a part of me, now that I know the tiger can do the cow sound, a part of me is actually on the tiger side. I am completely team tiger in this situation. Uh, this guy deserves a good meal. Uh, both of them, actually. They're, they're good tigers, you know? This is doing what tigers are supposed to do. And what's up with those cows, you know? Just over there, just being delicious, you know? You trick cows into coming over. And it's not just tigers. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey just to murk its parents like a Disney movie. And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Which is probably how Mayor Stubbs of Talkeena, Alaska stayed in office for 20 years, even surviving assassination attempts by dogs, BB guns, and a deep fryer. But there's another special ability cats have, and it could arguably be the- Wait, how did the deep fryer work? Did, did somebody just try to put him in a deep fryer? Or- I, I don't even know what the other situation is because in my mind the only other situation is if a deep fryer was like th I don't know if somebody unless somebody threw a deep fryer at him unless the deep fryer was just open and this is a cat he just got on top of something and just tried to like go inside the deep fryer himself which 
Can you blame the deep fryer? It's just, you know, that's more of a cat trying to off himself. The most overpowered of all. Pretty privilege. It's how Dolphins got Flipper, Orcas got Free Willy. Meanwhile, the best movie deal Shark Management could get them was being typecast as Jaws. You see, there's this thing called baby schema. It basically means that humans have an intrinsic bias towards a certain set of facial features in people and animals, to the point where it just makes us want to protect them. And with their big head, wide eyes, and round forehead, cats literally remind us of babies. And even though it's a buff from nature, cats will 100% play into this by figuring out what combination of ear wiggling, whisker pointing, and eye narrowing gets the best response from people. Now add the fact that slow blinking with your cat can trigger oxytocin in both of you, the literal hormone that bonds a mother to her child, and you can see how cats were basically engineered to be irresistible. It's pretty privileged on every steroid possible. And it's wild because if any other animal had a reputation for cold indifference and global genocide, it'd be cause of pause, but because it's cats, we just let it slide. Cat cuteness virtually has us in a chokehold, and I said virtual for a reason. It's said that 50% of all internet traffic is driven by cat content. That's 50% of all the stuff on the internet. That's crazy. I don't know about that. But then again, this is currently a video about cats, so he may actually be onto something. Now, the thing about cats that, you know, I like to point out is that they don't care about us at all. Uh, cats are the most I'm clearly using you. Uh, animal out there you know dogs you could tell a dog you walk into the house the dog cares about you if the dog doesn't really care about you he's gonna go up to you sniff you a little bit go back to doing what he was doing you know if he loves you like most dogs they're gonna go up to you bother you non-stop they're, they're they're right there by your side they're like your your right hand uh, a cat you know Unless you have a really good relationship with your cat and even sometimes then you walk in the house that cat's just being like all right Where's my food? You know, where, where's where's the stuff you're supposed to be doing for me? You know, I, I'm not here for the whole fetching things. I'm, I'm not your plaything. I'm you are mine. You're my I'm your owner. You know, that's this is how the cats view it. Cat, you're the cat is like above you in the cat's mind at all times. And I don't really got time for that, you know. Dogs, you could easily put them in their place. You'd be like, yo, this is the hierarchy. You know, it's me. It's whoever I'm with. It's the freaking, you know, dog. It's you. For cats, it's always cat and then everyone else. You know, the human family. Cat, human. Dogs are like, yeah, I see you, human family. I'm the dog. Yeah, I, I, I can't deal with some of these cats, bro. I want you to think about that during this ad. Matter of fact, and I'm willing to put money on it. For some of y'all, this ad's about to be cat related. Oh, you're back. Oh, by the way, was it? Was it cat related? I'm actually curious. But the thing that almost always gets forgotten is that cats give back as much as they take, which leads to their next flex, healing powers. And not just for them. Science says having a cat living under your roof easily extends your subscription to life. Studies show that cat owners are 40% less likely to suffer a heart attack and have a 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular... This cat right here is warming her up because one day he's going to murder her. And I don't say that as, you know, I don't want to sound mean with that. But this cat, the way it's looking at her... 30 is sizing her up right now. Uh, this cat is definitely being chill right now, doing the quick little things here, but it's sizing her up. Now, also with his point, I will say, I do feel like old, like a lot of people with cats do become old. I see a lot of old people with cats. Uh, normally, they're like older women. They have cats. They're old. So this, this definitely has some logic to it. 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of preventable death today, cats are like a real life one-up. Not to mention kids that grew up around cats have less of a chance of getting folded by allergies, especially if the exposure started in early infancy or even while they're still in the womb waiting room. And then there's the fact that just petting a cat can nerf stress levels and blood pressure. But if you really want to get literal about it, cats purr at a frequency that's said to improve bone density, repair tendons, and promote healing. I never really fully- What? What? So wait, cats purring can help you with your bone density? It's like the vibration of it. It's like, yo, my, your bones are like, yo, this is the, I, you, this is the good vibration right here, bro. This is some good stuff you get, and you're getting some. Keep this cat around. Now, do they heal just the part of you that they touch? Like a cat's purring on you, you know, the back is all like doing the purring thing. You touch it with your hand. Is only your hand healed, 
or does that vibration travel up your body through your other hand down to your legs into your skull uh improves every does it does it bounce off you know is it just a a radiating vibration in the air that you know may slightly be dissipating that just kind of gets you and you're like oh man my body it's so much it's so strong now Anybody in the comments, if you are a veterinarian, cat expert, or cat lady, or cat man, uh, please comment below. Um, how does this work? Do the vibrations only heal you when you're touching it, when you're around it? Is it like Wi-Fi? Do you have to be a certain distance from the cat to receive the healing from it? I want to know. Understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body. Vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed that those same vibrations can help with soft tissue injuries like sprains and strains. I know I said they live rent free, but considering all they do to carry our health, again, I, I feel like we could let it slide. It's not just a buff to your health either. Nah. I vividly remember seeing a bunch of surveys that said that women on dating sites actually find men with cats more attractive. Something about seeming more nurturing or emotionally intelligent. On an unrelated note, I want y'all to meet my editor and content manager, Aslan. <laughs> Say hi, Aslan. Say hi. Huh? This is cat propaganda, people, and I want you to know this. Uh, women actually like guys with dogs more. Um, I, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm throwing it out there because I feel like this is super cat propaganda. You know, I won't be surprised if there's like a link to how you can get a free cat or something or like get, donate to some type of cat resource by the end of this video. Uh, yeah, I I see what this was. I moved past the blinders. I'm looking at you. This is cat, uh, uh, cataganda. Oh, good boy. I tried to find the articles online, but apparently there was a switch up and now women find cat owners less attractive. So on another unrelated note, yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting for a friend. Shout out to you, Yusuf. Yeah, but anyway, cat claw armor is so strong that it might just be able to save you from cancer. We've all heard the stories of feline physicians detecting it in people before anyone else could. Cats have a sense of smell about 14 times stronger than humans, with their 200 million odor receptors to our pitiful, almost embarrassing five. Five million. Tumors produce volatile organic compounds, and these VOCs leave the body through sweat and breath. And there's a lot of respected researchers out there that will die on the hill that cats can sniff it out the same way dogs can. In 2018, rescue cat Mia climbed on owner Michelle Pearson's chest and wouldn't get off for anything, sniffing and pawing at, you know, the right one, while also meowing and looking at her, as, as cats do. It wasn't until her husband checked for himself that he felt the telltale lump, and that's how the cat that was rescued from certain death ended up returning the favor and saving her owner from stage two breast cancer. And that's not even much of a reach considering there's also stories of cats warning their diabetic owners of their potentially fatally low blood sugar. Either that or cats can see the future and they'll choose to keep you in theirs if they like you enough. And even that- Yep, that's it. Cats definitely can see the future. Um, and if they like you, they will save your life. Uh, if they don't, they will not. They will watch you as you take your final breath and then they will gather together and, uh, you know, eat your body now that's that happens with cats uh if you have a whole bunch of cats that definitely happens 100 percent uh because cats again they don't care about you like dogs do cats are using you uh for your resources and the moment you stop having those resources 95 percent of cats are out of there now there are a good five percent of cats that are just good cats and they will stay around they love their owners if you have a cat that loves you, you might be right. If you think your cat loves you, you might be right. There's a, there's a, you got a 5% chance. That's low key valid considering superpower number seven is that cats have ultra instinct. Those whiskers can detect sudden changes in air currents to figure out the size, shape, and speed of nearby objects. It's like a it's whole true. radar system growing out of their face, and it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Bro, oh. I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a ch Yo, that's sad as sh That is very sad, I'll be honest. Uh, but that is, that is a cute cat. I'm falling for the cat propaganda, guys. Whiskers are. Cats can even use their whiskers to figure out what direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Now to us, it's interesting and pretty cool, but to a mouse trying to make it home to his family, that's gotta be some bullshit. And cats don't just have it on their face, they have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cat since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually past tense. 
And honestly, this might be the most broken ability cats have. It's basically impossible to catch a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you, they don't even have to smell you. All it takes is the smallest change in air currents to dry snitch on you. But as predators, cats are the ones that do the sneaking, which only makes their next ability even more of a jihad for their- Hold on now, what is this? What am I looking at right now? Is this a, f a mouse literally trapped in the corner by a cat? Who's filming this? What is happening right now? Why is this mouse? This mouse looks genuinely scared. I'm falling for the mouse propaganda now because look at this. This looks like a freaking face. This mouse looks genuinely scared for his life. Pray. Right. Superpower should. number eight. Cats are athletic freaks of nature. No, seriously, cats are the most athletic group of animals on earth and I'm gonna stand on that. There might not be a single event at the Olympics that one of the 40 flavors of feline can flex on us in. You want speed? Cheetahs can go 0 to 60 in 3 seconds and can peak out at over 70 miles per hour. A cheetah on a Sunday morning jog can still get pulled over on the turnpike, ain't that crazy? Wanna see some long jumping? Cougars can clear 45 feet horizontally on an off day. You wanna see a cat get high minus the catnip? The circle jumps so high that their meal prep literally involves pimp slapping birds right out of the air. And for powerlifting, here we have a literal deadlift by a leopard using only its teeth. Yes, that is a rhino. Yes, that is a giraffe. And speaking of leopards, they're also gymnasts on steroids that turn trees into jungle gyms. And if you think Bruh. you're safe from the smoke and water, keep in mind that the caiman is part of one of the most successful group of predators in history. And all it took was an aquatic equalizer in the form of a cat to wreck their entire game plan. Not to mention jaguars have been seen swimming clear across the Panama Canal. Yeah, that one. Also, they have a hydraulic press for a jaw. God help you if you get caught in it. And all I need to say about tigers is that this is an Indian gar, and even this walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped giggle gar field. And I don't even need to say anything about lions, those triceps speak for themselves. Cats are nature's population control, and there isn't anywhere on earth outside of the devil's ice rink that doesn't have some kind of cat running it. Even the travel size ones are a menace. The deadliest cat in the world is the African black-footed cat, and because of their metabolism, not only can they catch up to 15 bodies a night, they also have a hunting success rate of 60%. Not okay. That cat is cute, and I don't care what anybody says, that is a house cat. Uh, that is the average house cat, and I I would have one. It would definitely try to kill me 100%, but the cat propaganda is working strong right now, and this cat is very cute. Not even lions, tigers, and leopards can touch that. There's a reason why domestic cats put billions of animals on shirts a year. And sometimes they turn entire species into history lessons. And unlike their wild cousins, a lot of times with domestic cats, they do it just for fun. Yeah, you think it's cute, but it's bloodlust. And if you're a mouse, an op with whiskers is like Thanos. They do be inevitable, especially when you factor superpower number nine. Cats can teleport. I'm dead serious. Cats do this thing where they just spawn wherever the plot needs them the most. Yoink. As solitary hunters, cats can cover insane amounts of distance in times that really make no sense. Take mountain lions, for example. Young male cougars will often travel hundreds of miles away from their mother's territory to find their own. In 2009, a tagged cougar took a walk that took him from Black Hills, South Dakota, all the way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Basically, he hiked from Mount Rushmore to 30 miles from Manhattan. And it's not- Wait, the cat had to pass through Ohio? What what is going on, people? What is happening right now? Why? I'm... So wait, this is. Should we ban cats? Can can we ban cats? Is it even possible? Do our cat overlords allow us to put limitations on them? Not just cougars. I don't think so. That go cross country. A tiger named T1 managed to walk 800 miles across India in only a few months, fueled by nothing but the power of horny. And of course, there's a story of El Jefe, a jaguar that randomly showed up in Arizona just outside Tucson. I could really keep going. From June 2017 to July 2018, a young lynx trekked from a wildlife refuge in Alaska all the way into the heart of the Yukon, a trip that totaled 2,174 miles. His name was Hobo, by the what way. What the hell? Can't even make that up. But the best story of teleporting cats was Clementine Jones. She was a cat in New York whose family left her behind because they were moving and they figured the trip would be too hard on a pregnant cat. Oh, little did they know. Clementine spent a couple of months with her kittens and then one day just headed out and popped up at her old family's home 1,600 miles away in Denver. And it's not even like the family got tricked by a dupe. Clementine was born with an extra toe and had a burn mark on her shoulder. There was no mistaking her. There's only one cat power that's arguably more impressive, and you saw it come. How did that cat find the family? How did they find where the family's new home was? What is this cat, like a freaking private investigator? This cat put a hit out on this family? This cat, like, has... 
connections with the FBI in order to find this family? How did this cat go from New York to Denver and know to find the people? Did, the, did this just happen to be in Denver? And they were like, yo, that's my cat down the street over there. Or did the cat come up to their house and was just freaking knocked on the, you know, pawed on the door, you know, start meowing at it. And they were like, yo, what's that? What's up with this cat sound here? We, we used to have a cat in New York. We're not those people no more. And then the cat shows up. I need to know more about this story. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I am a little bit suspicious of this, this final cat story here. This, that's a long way to go. A lot of states to cover, uh, and just to go from New York to Denver, I, I still, how did, I got so many questions for the cat. Coming as soon as you clicked on this video. Superpower number 10, mind control. And it's all because of a little parasite called, you know the name, Toxoplasma gondii. It all starts when this parasite enters a cat because they literally only reproduce in their bowels and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement, usually in a litter box. Now here's the problem. The Toxoplasma gondii needs to find a way back into the cat in order to hit restart on its life cycle. And the best way to do that is by setting up shop inside one of the animals on its grocery list. The only issue is no mouse that values its life is going anywhere near a death sentence with toe beans to make it happen. So the parasite, which by the way basically uses the mouse as a layover, they begin to rewire its brain in order to remove the fear of cats. And I don't even know how, but infected mice can even start fiending for cat pee. With more irrational confidence than a father of four in an Instagram model's comments, it's easier for the mouse to get body bagged by its number one op, thus repeating this vicious mouse murking cycle. And of course we now believe that when this same parasite invades us, they do the same thing they would to a mouse. Which is why popular opinion is that the Toxoplasma parasite causes an unreasonable attraction to cats. And it's possible that this factory reset of our personality is due to the parasite making enzymes that control dopamine. And it's not just humans that can get infected. Turns out afflicted hyena cubs end up bolder in the face of lions, which is a great way for them to get invited to a meet and greet with Mufasa. It's not 100% proven that the parasite's responsible for all the cat people in the world, but hear me out. There's proof that this parasite was present in ancient Egyptian mummies. And these were the people that straight up worshiped them. Not to mention up to a third of all people alive right now have it and most have no idea. And that's why I say cats have the wildest plot armor I've ever seen. Because real talk, only cats could spin a parasitic infection into a way of living like free. Yeah, that, that actually explains a lot. Because, again, I clearly haven't been affected because I know cats are evil. Um, I gotta stop saying that. Okay, cats are at least a chaotic neutral. If not, then they are a, I guess, a morally good evil. Like, I don't know. The cats are not in the morally good good people they're they're not in that top left corner of the chart there they're somewhere either in the middle of that chaotic uh neutral chart or they're at the bottom right like the this is it's only one of the two um so yeah guys if you are a cat person congratulations you probably have uh been just around too much cat poop and um yeah, you're you're now affected. Uh, all the all of ancient Egypt was affected. Uh, any random cat person you see is affected, uh, and mice are affected. Uh, you know, they're they're just like yo. I love the mice are just like I love cats now. Uh, if you see somebody trying to drink cat's urine, you know why. Trust me, I would know. Isn't that right, me boo? And that's why cats are the most broken animals in nature. With, with cats being nature's cutest form of population control, I talk about them a lot in my book. Hold on, sorry girl. Okay. With cats being nature's cutest form of population control, I talk about them a lot in my book, 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description if you wanna see for yourself. But make sure you drink water, hug your mother, hug a cat, it might just save your life. And if he allows it, I'ma see y'all in the next one. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a, you're such a good boy. Okay, okay. You can go now. Uh. That was a great video. Remember to check out Casual Geographic uh, for more. Uh, and yeah, this was such an interesting thing here. Cats are freaking evil. Uh, cats themselves are infecting us to love them more. How do you feel about that? Are you a cat person? Are you a dog person? I don't, I don't, never heard about any dog parasites that are like, well, I'm sure there's dog parasites. I never heard anything that dogs are doing to make us love them more outside of just being good boys, you know, good boys and good girls. 
good doggies, you know? Nobody's ever like, oh, man, that's such a good cat. They're just like, oh, that cat, you know? People don't tell you, like, yo, I got a great cat. They just say, they either tell you this cat will kill you or don't mess with the cat or you can mess with the cat. Like, this this cat does, doesn't like being touched. Um, you, you almost never hear that for dogs. It's always like, well, you know, this dog's a little bit too friendly. You know, you never hear the cat being too friendly. That's that's the thing right there. So, yeah, guys, comment below. How do you feel about cats? How do you feel about me? Drop it all down in the comments. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to this channel here for more. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, tell me below. If you have a suggestion for a video, tell me below. If you just don't want to see any more videos from me, why are you watching this long? Uh, but for everyone else, remember, thank you for watching. I love you. And as always, bye.